Welcome to the course of Computer Organization and Architecture. This is lecture number three. And today you will learn about one human architecture in detail. So what is one human architecture? One human architecture is also known as one human model or Princeton architecture. It was first published by John von Neumann in 1945, which is based on a stored program concept. And uh, historically, there are two types of computers. First is uh, fixed program computers and second is stored program computers. What are these computers? Fixed program computers are very specific. That is, it is used for a specific task. Their function is specific. They cannot be reprogrammed. Uh, the examples of fixed program computers are calculators, and what is stored program computers? Uh, these are programmable, multi-purpose computers which can store the tasks or data. Also, it can be programmable. All the modern computers are the, based on the stored program concepts. So, stored program concept says that the programs and data are stored in the same memory since the program and data are stored in the same memory, so instructions fetch and data operation cannot occur at the same time. This concept was developed by John von Neumann. Also, that time, the same idea was developed by Alan Turing. But the John Neumann was published first this idea. Also, von Neumann architecture is known as IS computer. Let's see the a structure of one human architecture and you can you may pause the video and uh, draw the architecture the one human architecture has main three components a CPU a main memory and a input output equipments the basic units of one numeric architectures are a main memory which stores both the instructions and as well as data. So it stores the data and instructions. That is, at one time it only stores only instruction and another time it stores the data. Another component is the arithmetic and logic unit, which is a part of CP, which is capable of operating on binary data. That is it can perform the arithmetic and logical operations. A control unit, which is also a part of CPU, the central processing unit. So control unit directs the operation of the processor. That is, it tells the computer's memory, the arithmetic and logic unit, and uh, the input output devices that how to respond to the instructions. And uh, another unit is input output devices, which was uh, which is operated by the control unit. So the example of input output devices are your keyboard, uh, keyboard printers, and uh, mouse. These are the examples of input output devices. So what are the basic characteristics of one human architectures? The basic characteristic of one human architecture is the first point is the programs and data can be stored in the same memory. The second point is the computer executes the program in sequence. That is, a computer executes the program in sequence as directed by the instructions in the program. How the instructions says the execution, that is, uh, how the instruction says the sequence, that sequence followed by the program. So the computer executes the program in sequence, which was directed by the instructions, which is uh, given by the program. Okay. Also, the third point is a program can modify itself when the computer executes the programs. So these are all the basic characteristics of one human architectures. Also, 
what are the detail architecture of main memory and a cpu of a volume architecture uh, in the cpu there are uh, different components so i have divided the cpu into two main components two parts here you can see that and the uh, upper box has a program control unit that is pcu the program control unit is nothing but your control unit which controls the instructions that is it is the computer's memory or uh, your uh, alu how to response the instruction that is your program control unit also in a big yellow box you can see a instruction decoder instructions decoder it is uh, also it is not uh, it is nothing but it is a combinational circuit so which is translate an instructions into the address that is uh, any instruction which is given to the instructions decoder it it translated the instructions into the address which is you used by the memory okay and uh, the second uh, component the another part of the cpu is data processing unit data processing unit it is uh, it is an uh, electronic circuit which manipulate input data into the machine readable code so what the input data has given to the data processing unit it uh, convert into the machine readable form and you can you are also familiar with the alu the arithmetic logic unit here in the small boxes there are different type of cpu registers which are used for various functions and which is various purpose so the cpu registers are nothing but the these are the set of flip flops there are different types of registers okay and here you can see the all the components of cpu which is connected by a communicating system which is known as bus so it transfers the data between the components and the physical meaning of bus is and what is the bus in the physically you know that the this is nothing but it is these are the parallel electrical wires okay so the cp registers are used here in this architecture is ip ivr this is these registers are present in all type of architecture because all are the based on stored program concept computers these are the cp registers the ibr the instructions buffer registers ir instructions register ar address registers a program counter pc dr data registers accumulator ac and mq mq is a general purpose register that can hold the temporary data so all the data are temporarily stored in different type of registers because these type of registers are used for different purpose in cpu we will learn in detail about cpu registers and uh, another topics in this course okay so don't be afraid from uh, these registers so this is all about the detail architecture of von neumann and uh, you have so also you should have familiar with the von neumann bottleneck what is von neumann bottleneck it is a limitation of data transfer rate data transfer rate is throughput between the cpu that is the central processing unit and a memory compared to the amount of memory that is the it is limitation between cpu and main memory of what of throughput which is caused by the fact there are two facts here the first is the instructions can only be done one at a time well one instructions can only be done at a time okay and can only be carried out sequentially these are two the problems so both of these factors hold back the efficiency of the cpu hope you like the videos and uh, see you in the next representation if you like the videos share it with your friends and uh, subscribe the channel thank you